What's up? Bradley Aiden Johnson here, and I wanted to do a video on false positive readings of stools. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of words in the thing. A stool is when you're training and you get to a point where you can't make any progress. You hit a wall and you don't know how to get through it or get past it. Um, in terms of training, a stool is you can't. I just can't get past 50 kilogram bench. In terms of a weight loss. People call it normally call them plateaus, where I just can't lose any more weight. And what I found in both of them is they tend to be bullshit. And I'm going to explain to you why. A false positive reason is a reading where you believe it to be a positive, but it's not in case of positive. It's actually a in, an incorrect reading. And what happens in training is that due to the prevalence of the what I believe to be a myth of linear progression, people believe they will get stronger at a rate that is un, not only unsustainable but it's actually wildly unrealistic to perpetuate. So. You train and you start training in the gym and you have an empty bar and you do a squat with it and then you do five by five. Let's say that's your training protocol. Next time you come into the gym, you do 25 kilos, then you do 30 kilos, and then you do 35 kilos, and then you do etc. Now, this is sustainable for a novice trainee that's never trained before because these weights are all relatively light and as a male, you should be able to just cycle up through these up to about, you know, any average male be, should be able to get to like 40, 50 kilos in a squat, whatever. After that point, it gets harder. Right? You can't add five kilos every single time that you bench. So if you are on a strictly linear, um, pro linear training protocol, you will hit a point where you can't do the reps and you fail and then you may keep trying, keep trying. So you might, well, the program might just require you to keep trying until eventually you pass it. Maybe that time is a week two weeks, whatever it is, and then you get past it. Maybe your program requires you to reset 10% because you failed and climb back up. So either you go like this on the first training protocol, bang, failure. And you stay there until you get up a little bit. And then you stay there a little longer and you go up a little bit. You stay there even longer and you go up a bit. And eventually you get to what is, as it was an explain, or maybe you go to um, bang, reset, bang, reset, bang, reset. So you go in, up a little bit down a little bit more up a little bit down and it goes up now what will happen it will maybe your training is even more precise than that and you use micro loading so what will happen is based on the reps you do your graph will look like that it will go up faster but then it will start to tail off now what you'll notice between all these graphs is some of them may be more jagged than the others so you might say more some training protocols are better or worse but they all do this up fast and then they slow down and that there is the video I did previously, which is the fallacy of linear progression because it's not really real. But the problem people have with the, with the false reading, false positive reading of stools is that at some point, the amount of time they've been at the same weight will become unacceptable to them. This is an emotional reaction. Yeah, You are a novice trainee. You believe that you get faster at a rate that is effectively arbitrary. You just decided that there's a rate at which you should get stronger. It might be a kilo a week. It might be a kilo a month. It might be a kilo a year. Whatever it is, you just decided it based on what you feel would be nice to get stronger at. Yeah, some percentage. So, and if your training, getting your progress stops becoming that speed based on, it's always based on the previous speeds you've enjoyed, right? Which are always gonna be faster, meaning this is why this is such a prevalence of this in, in, in training programming. Um, you're gonna be upset and emotionally you'll react to that by believing yourself to have stalled and requiring a change in programming. Either an increase, it's always an increase in something, that's the only way to adapt, an increase in weight somehow, to um, increase in weight, maybe a decrease in reps, increase of reps with the same weight, through, which you can't do, through um, an increase in volume. It's always volume because the key to increasing your anything is increasing the volume. So what people will do is they'll be like, okay, cool. So I can't progress at this thing. I need to do more sets or I need to go to the gym more often or something along that line, right? The problem with this is you don't necessarily have the genetic ability to adapt to wait fast enough for your mind to be happy with the progress. That doesn't mean you've stalled that just means it's slower than you would like. Tough T. That doesn't mean you've actually stalled. And even if you use microplates, and in my gym, I have eight kilo microplates, right? I've got microplates as small as exist. Yeah, I've got all kinds of my eight. I've got 0.5s, 0.25s, 0 0.125 kilo um, microplates. I can microload out the yin yang. I've got all, I've got every, I can do any weight combination. But whatever it is, if you take a female bench, even if I am microloading to the point where I increase every single time and my microloading gets down to eight of a kilo, that is on a bar, that's a quarter kilo increase. And at some point, a quarter kilo of increase is too much to do 
from one to another training session. So what you start believing is when you do that and you stall and you hit it and you come back again and you stall again, that mixture of the fact that whatever the weight is, maybe you can't increase whatever the weight is and the fact that because you're constantly increasing, even if you reset or if you stay there, you're gonna keep hitting that wall. It's a wall of failure, failure. Try that thing, that PR again, fail it. Try again, fail, fail, fail. That it's depleting, it makes you feel bad. So what you believe is, oh, my training program has come to a limit, I've stalled, um, I need new programming or something along those lines. And it's not always true because you have assessed what you believe to be progression based on your previous experience um, with your training of yourself. But you have no experience training yourself at the level you're currently at. No one has any experience of training themselves at the level they're at because they've only just reached that level. So it's based on just your emotional reaction to it. So you then change your programming to something else because you hope that will improve. But what you do is twofold. One, you may not actually improve adaptations because you didn't actually need that com complex pro programming. You didn't need intermediate programming or advanced novice programming or maybe advanced or elite programming. You were fine with the programming you had before. You just needed to accept that your games will come in slower chunks now. Also, by adding volume early on in your programming, your body will adapt to that level of volume. Meaning, for future adaptations to occur when you do in fact stall on a stall that is real, which I would say is three to four months. Three to four months at the same way means you really have stalled, yeah? And it's time for more advanced program, which is a really long time um, to people's mind. It's a really short time in the world of, 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 of real things. So uh, if you stall a, a, a weight for three, four, three or four months, which to a novice is, is ludicrous, it's never gonna happen to a novice. That's something for an intermediate to advanced lifter. And even those people, it's not, it's not a common thing. At that point, when they stall at that, level then they need to increase the volume but if you've been increasing volume all the time you need a massive shock of increased volume in order to stimulate the same response basically you're making your training more complicated and difficult than it needs to be and getting much less return for the amount of work that you're putting in and the idea of training is you get as much out of it for putting in as little as possible that is what good programming is all about and this is basically the only point i wanted to make in the video that sometimes you haven't actually stalled most times you haven't actually stalled. I see a lot of people that believe they stalled it away, that haven't in fact come close to stalling it away, but just don't like the fact that it's coming in slowly now. And again, tough tea. That's all I wanted to say. Peace.